Coach, before we get to questions from the media, could you just start with an opening statement on, you know, your de facto open week last week and your preparations for University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff? Yeah, I mean, first, foremost, just thoughts and prayers to all the people in Florida. We uh, obviously did not want to have to cancel the game, but completely understand what they're going through is uh, much bigger than a football game. So we've got players on our team that have family there as well and try to keep a close eye on that and them. So uh, just continued prayers. Um, you know, we tried to use it as much as we could as an opportunity to get better. We made made plenty of mistakes in the Nebraska game that we felt like cost us a win and have tried to um, try to utilize the last couple of days to to concentrate on getting better and, and fundamentals and also get a few guys healthy that were a little bit beat up and uh, just really do the best you can with the time that you're given. Uh, Pine Bluff comes in, so we get to play at home and, and uh, looking forward to playing here in front of our crowd. And uh, I think uh, a lot of excitement here in, in town about trying to uh, get here to the stadium and, and, and see a game especially with the absence of, of what would have been, you know, we thought a great opening night against Miami this past Saturday. So um, still focusing really on us, trying to just trying to improve so many inexperienced guys that can continue to learn, and that's that's where our focus has been. Thank you, Coach. We'll go to our first questions from Matt Robertson with the Jonesboro Sun. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Good, Matt. What's up? Hey, um, I was just going to ask. You, you mentioned that you had some injured players that uh, you were trying to get get healthy. How's Brandon Viner? And I guess can you give us an update on him? Brandon's probably still out for another week or two. Uh, pretty significant hamstring injury, uh, potential tear. Um, you know, on the on the deep ball that he made a play on at, at Nebraska. So, uh, good chance that we could lose him for another week or two. Uh, probably the most significant of all the injury. Uh, injuries that we had to deal with. Everybody else is, is really just kind of bumps and bruises, but um, being able to hold those guys for a couple of days and let their bodies feel better is going to you know is going to benefit us. Um, as far as Johnson White and Armand Wayway, do you expect to see them this this Saturday? Oh, uh, Johnson had a great practice yesterday, and, and definitely expect to see him uh, uh, you know, in a much more significant role. Wayway is still. Um, you know he's he's full go, but but just does not factor in as much. I think he's still trying to gain confidence. Physically, he's fine. I think most of us just dealing with it mentally, just dealing with traffic around him and bodies around him. And uh, I don't we don't really know when that's gonna when that's gonna happen for him. But uh, he's physically capable of playing. Just hasn't found has found his way back in the lineup yet. What is exactly the injury with Armand? I think it's it's more a combination of the knee surgery and then an ankle injury, the combination of the two, and just being comfortable with bodies falling around him. He just hasn't looked like he's comfortable in that position yet. I mean, he's physically fine in terms of structurally, but uh, you, know, you got to be able to step through there without any without any concern. And and he just doesn't feel comfortable in that in that position yet. And let me just ask this lastly. <clears throat> As far as the interruption in the schedule, you know, did that disrupt anything as far as, you know, I guess teams like to get into a, a weekly rhythm and, and this kind of probably threw the schedule and everything off for you guys. How have you guys handled that? I thought the guys handled it well. They were disappointed in not being able to play the game. I mean, everybody was looking forward to uh, Miami coming in. But uh, once uh, they got over the initial kind of shock of what was going to happen, I thought we utilized the days well. We had good practices. Yesterday was a really good practice coming back off of a two-day break. So I think uh, as well as could be expected, uh, it, it, our schedule has been so weird the last few years anyway with Tuesday games and Wednesday games and Thursday games and not playing on particular Saturdays. I don't think that in, in its sense was a huge change. It was just the down, uh, the emotional downside of, of not having a game that we had prepared for. Uh, but um, they, they bounced back well, and we had a good we had a good practice. All right. Thanks, Coach. Sure. Thank you, Matt. Our next questions come from Luke Matheson with RedWolfReport.com. Hey, Coach, I know uh, you mentioned a little bit previously just a second ago about the schedule and everything, but one thing I noticed over the weekend was a lot of the players on Twitter seems like they're kind of chomping at the bits to get back on the field. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, this was uh... – there was a lot of emotions built up and getting ready for Miami and, and the absence of that game. You could tell watching everybody else play this weekend and, and not having that, that opportunity, uh, I think probably fed into us having a really good practice yesterday. And that's where the, that's where the comments and tweets come from. Just guys, uh, 
just anxious to get out on the field and I love the fact that we're going to get to do it here at home. I know UAPB has had some issues, uh, the limited scholarships, things of that nature, and, and on paper, obviously, you guys should should win this one. But what are some of the challenges that UAPB will throw at you this week? I think that's one of the biggest challenges is just not is not uh, letting what happens on paper be a factor. I mean, you, you just look around the country and see uh, people that have overcome what's on paper and won games. I mean, I think Howard was a 45 point underdog a couple of weeks ago and found a way to beat UNLV. We don't we don't want to be the victims of of listening to what the paper says and, and looking at what the matchups on paper. We we've not played uh, our best football yet. And, and we made mistakes that cost us a game uh, a week and a half ago against Nebraska. And so right now we're our biggest, worst enemy. Uh, we should be bigger in most places, and we should have better speed, team speed. But we still got to go play the game and execute. And so to me, we're, we're, we're our biggest enemy. We've got to learn to play discipline, sound, fundamental football. And I haven't seen that yet in, in a live setting of a game. I've seen it at times in practice, but not in a live setting of a game where we can, you know, we can draw from that. And that's really the challenge for Saturday. Final question for you. Uh, I believe every year that you've been here, you've played an in-state opponent again, got Pine Bluff this week. What does that mean to you? And what does that mean to a team to play another team from within the borders of Arkansas? I think it's huge for the state, huge for football in the state. And, and to me, I mean, it's, it just makes a lot of sense. We, uh, we're always going to look to to do that and uh, continue to try to create that opportunity for the state of Arkansas and guys to travel, just drive down the road a, a few hours and, and load up the stadium and, and keep the, keep the money in the state and, and help build uh, football for the state of Arkansas. So we'll, we'll continue to do that as often as we can. All right, coach. Appreciate it. Thank you, Luke. And uh, thank you coaches are all the questions we have today. We appreciate your all time. Right. Thanks.